Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Yeah, danger is my assignment. I get sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, though. Trouble. But when I walk into the commissioner's office, I don't realize that this assignment's going to end up with me dangling from the wrong end of a rope. Well, here he is, Commissioner. Thanks, Ruth. Steve, I suppose I pulled you right out of a big deal, as usual. No, no, it was all very innocent this time, Commissioner. Matter of fact, I was down at the rifle range improving my marksmanship. What? Honest. Alone? Well... From where I stood, it looked like he was closing in on a target for tonight. That's what I thought. I have your plane ticket at my desk when you're ready, Steve. Okay, Ruth. Well, where am I going this time, Commissioner? To Munich. Your plane leaves in one hour. You'll be looking for the memory chain. Memory chain? No relation to the daisy chain, is it? I'm afraid not. Good. I'd have a pretty hard time passing myself off as Queen of the May. (laughs) Uh, Seriously, Steve, this is the toughest proposition we've ever been up against. It's a skillfully organized pipeline through which vital information is leaking out of this country to Eastern Europe. I see. There are no documents involved. It's all done by a system of runners. Each runner memorizes the information and passes it on to the next one by word of mouth. And right now, a vital chemical equation is somewhere along that pipeline. Uh Uh-huh. Any idea how far along the chain it is by now? Yes. We caught up with the first runner in Lisbon, but two days too late. He'd already passed the message on. We then traced runner number two to Paris, but we were six hours too late there. Sounds like we're running a poor second all along the line. Yes, and I'm sending you over there to come in first for a change. We now have reason to believe that the next transfer point is Munich. And we have a tip that a woman named Eva Schaefer may be one of the runners. One of our agents is in Munich now, Kurt Allison. Now, Steve, get over there and work with him and then go anywhere and do anything you have to to keep that equation from getting through. And that's it. You've got your assignment. Good luck. National Broadcasting Company is presenting Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy in the role of Steve Mitchell, colorful, two-fisted government agent. At all those places of the world where danger and intrigue walk hand in hand, there you will find Steve Mitchell on another Dangerous Assignment. Sure, I've got my assignment. Just a simple matter of running over to Europe and trying to guess who's got a vital secret locked up in their head. This would be a great spot for a mind reader. Well, it's Thursday when my plane lands in Munich. I check around and learn that Allison is registered at the Koenigsberg Hotel. I head for his room. I've been expecting you, Steve. Commissioner told me you were coming. Yeah, how about this uh, Eva Schaefer, Kurt? Any idea where she is? Sure. Right next door. What? Yeah, I spotted her at the depot when she arrived from Paris six hours ago. I heard her give a cab driver the name of this hotel, so I broke a few speed laws and got here ahead of her. <laughs> you had the desk clerk give you this room right next to hers, huh? Yeah. Then I had the clerk stall her down in the lobby long enough for me to slip a couple of microphones in her room. Brother, you work fast. Well, I had to. Oh, here are the earphones. Uh, take a listen. Okay. Anything going on? No. What's she been doing since she got here? Filing her nails, mostly. You know, that sound gets awfully annoying after a while. Hey, wait a minute. Sounds like somebody's knocking on her door. Yeah? The evening paper, Fräulein. But I ordered no paper. It is a service of a hotel. Yeah, very well. Danke. Who was it, Steve? Bellboy brought her the paper. Could have been some sort of a signal. Hey, wait a minute. She's leaving. What? Yeah, she just went by our room. Probably heading for the stairs. Wait a minute. Let her get down the hallway. Okay, let's go. Yeah, heading down the stairs into the lobby. I got a car outside if we need it, Steve. Good. Hey, uh, maybe... Hey, watch it, Steve. We better go single file. The stairway's getting crowded. 
Hey, brother, is that all one man coming up at us? Yeah, how about that? I beg your pardon, gentlemen. Sorry to crowd you. Oh, that's okay. If you'll just allow me to squeeze by. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Squeeze is the word, all right. Yeah, come on. There she is, sitting in that chair on the other side of the lobby. Let's us sit down here. Oh, okay. Uh, and she may contact somebody here in the lobby, Steve. Wait, she's getting up. Yeah. Hey, she dropped something in the far side of her chair. Huh? You see? She's picking it up now. Yeah, looks like a pencil. I wonder what... Oh, she stopped at the cigarette counter. Come on. I want to take a look around that chair where she was sitting. There was no one near her, Steve. I know. Here we are. I still want to know what she was doing with a pencil. She must have been holding it in her right hand, on this side of the chair, out of our sight. I get it now. Look, this pipe running up the wall beside the chair, it goes right through the ceiling, probably to the second floor hall above us. Yeah, and there are pencil smudges in the pipe near the floor. Yeah, she could have been tapping that pipe with her pencil, sending a message. Steve, she's heading out the door. Stay with her, Kurt. I'm going to see what I can find out upstairs. I head upstairs, two at a time. The second floor hall is dark, but I spot the pipe running up the wall, and then I hear a door close at the far end of the hall. I head in that direction fast, but when I get there, I see it's a door to the back stairway. I pound down the stairs and out into the alley, but there's no one in sight. So now I know a message has been passed on, and the runner's gotten away. I head for the street. A block and a half away, I see Kurt tailing the girl. He turns into another alley. I speed up, then, as I'm half a block away... Shots are from the alley. I get there and turn in. And there's Kurt, lying on the ground in front of me. Oh, it's, it's my own fault, Steve. Come on, Kurt. I'll get you to a doctor. No, and... no, it's too late. Check on the girl, Steve. A girl. You know where she went? She should be down there at the end of the alley. Huh? I think I got her. I think... I... Oh. Kurt. Kurt. But he's gone. I go down to the end of the alley, and the girl is there all right. One look at her, I know she won't be transmitting any more messages. So now we've gotten three links of the chain. One in Lisbon, one in Paris, and one here in the alley in Munich. It leaves just one more, the most important one of all, the guy who's carrying the message right now. I head back to the hotel, and the desk clerk... Yeah, hey, Mitchell, what can I do for you? You can tell me if anybody's checked out of the hotel during the last few minutes. Has anybody checked out, he asks. Ach, there has been a regular exodus, four people. Who were they? And where did they go? Three of them left for the Bauerbach Inn. Bauerbach Inn? Where's that? East of here, in the Alps, near the border. I see. Three of them? Yeah. Fräulein Kent, most attractive young woman, I might add. Also, Herr Gripo. And finally, Herr Godel, the stout gentleman. You may have seen him around the hotel here. One cannot help noticing. Wait a minute. He must be the boy who was coming up the stairs when I was coming down. And that message was sent to the second floor, too. Upstairs, downstairs, messages. I do not understand. Never mind. I think I do. Okay, thanks. I... Wait a minute. Yeah? You said four people left this hotel, but you only gave me three names. What about the fourth? Oh, yeah, I almost forgot. The fourth one was a woman. She left the hotel in quite a hurry. Oh? It was a very close thing. What do you mean? She went to the hospital. And uh, this uh, bird you talk about was not far behind. What bird? The stork. Oh, great. Well, see you later. So I head east toward the Alps. Six hours later, I arrive at the Barbach Inn. It's perched up on a mountainside and there's snow all around. The whole place looks like a Christmas card. Except that I've got a strong hunch that whoever I'm going to find here... It isn't going to be Santa Claus. Ah, good evening, sir. Welcome to the Barbach Inn. You the proprietor? Ah, yeah, a great such your service. If you will sign the register here, I will fix up for you a nice room. Okay. Looks like sort of a slack season for you, Kreutzer. Yeah, only two guests. Both of them from Munich, I see. Carlos Grippo and Helen Kent. Uh, are you a friend of hers, Herr Mitchell? Well, uh... Oh, I will be glad to tell her you are here and to... Uh... No, never mind. I... Why not? Huh? 
it's really quite flattering to be inquired about. Well, you see, I've... Uh... Oh, but I thought you two were friends. Well, not exactly. The I... evening's young yet, though. Oh? I know. You used to know another Helen Kent and thought I was the one. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's the trouble with having such a common name. Disappointed? Not exactly. You going to be staying here long? Well, that depends. I like excitement. Well, maybe you came to the wrong place. Doesn't look very exciting around here. It wasn't. Oh? Funny how the atmosphere can change all of a sudden, isn't it? Yeah. Might be an interesting topic of conversation over a drink in front of the fire. Might be it then. I'll be down as soon as I get unpacked. I'll wear a red carnation so you'll recognize me. That really won't be necessary. I'm sure I'll remember you. I go up to my room and stretch out on the bed, trying to add up the deal in my mind. At this point, I'm pretty sure that the person I'm after, the last link in the memory chain, is either Helen Kent, Carlos Grippo, or Gordell, the fat boy. But what's worrying me is that Gordell hasn't shown up at the inn. I start downstairs to have that drink with Helen, and then I see I needn't have worried, because waddling up the stairs towards me is a very familiar hulk. Excuse me, sir. If you will allow me to squeeze by you, I... But wait... I believe I have already squeezed by you earlier today, have I not, on the stairway in Munich? That's right. You've got a good memory. A photographic one. I pride myself on it, sir. Godel is my name. Steve Mitchell. Delighted, sir. I look forward to making your acquaintance properly a little later downstairs under less cramped conditions. Until then, Mr. Mitchell. Until then, Mr. Godel. Hmm. Hail, hail. The gang's all here. Hmm? Oh, Helen. Over here, by the fire. Okay, I... Uh, oh, I didn't know you were with somebody. This is a friend of mine, Carlos Grippo. Carlos, Steve Mitchell. Hi. I am honored, Senor Mitchell. Helen, I thought we were to take a walk around. I'm really too tired. Carlos, be a dear and bring us all a drink. Hmm? Oh, look, I can get my own. Uh... Well, you don't mind. Do you, Carlos? I... Of course not, Helen. We'll be back shortly. Looks like your boyfriend isn't too happy about things. Carlos? Oh, he means well, but he's he's a little boring at times. You've known him long? Not very. He's frightfully rich, I understand. Comes from some part of South America. Seems to have made a hobby lately of following me around. Oh, well, I can think of worse hobbies. You know, I can think of much more interesting things to talk about than Carlos. Yeah, for instance? For instance, us. You uh, on vacation here? No, no, I'm working. Hmm? I take pictures for a European feature syndicate. I see. Well, that probably means you do a lot of traveling. Mm Mm-hmm. How about you, Steve? What brings you here? Oh, vacation, mostly. Going to stay long? I don't know. That depends. On what? Whether the uh, atmosphere gets exciting or not? So, now we're talking about the atmosphere again? Mm Mm-hmm. Maybe this one could get exciting, Steve. I don't doubt it. Maybe... Pauline Kent. Hmm? Well, looks like the atmosphere will have to wait. The uh, innkeeper told me you uh, wished to see me. Uh, I'm August, the guide. Oh, yes, August. This is Steve Mitchell. Uh, Mitchell? August? I wanted to find out if all the arrangements had been made. Yeah, uh, we leave early in the morning. Good. Leave? Mm Mm-hmm. We're going on a hike. Oh, where to? Oh, uh, look, uh, out the window there. You mean that mountain? Yeah, to the top. Brother, you've got ambition. Well, I think I can probably get some good shots along the way. Like to come, Steve? Me? Cl- climb that thing? Oh, no, thanks. Oh, well, it might be fun. Fun yet. You break your neck getting to the top, and what do you do when you get there? Oh, then you're on top. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> you look on the other side, and you come down again. The climb, that is the thing. Not for me, it isn't. I... Wait a minute. You say you look over on the other side. What's on the other side? Another country. I see. Who uh, all's going on this hike, anyway? Carlos and I, with August here's guide, of course. You know, I just changed my mind. I'd like to come with you. Wonder. What? What? Carlos, you dropped the train. See, it was clumsy of me. I didn't even hear you come up. You were all so busy talking. Oh, what's the matter, Carlos? You disturbed at the thought of my going along on the hike? Probably no whiz at it, but I think I can hold up my end of things. We shall see, senor. Helen, may I speak with you for a moment? Yes, all right. Maybe later, Steve? Maybe. Helen. 
coming, Garland. Well, uh, Mitchell, I suggest you get a full night's sleep. It'll be a hard climb tomorrow. Good evening, Mr. Mitchell. Oh, hello, Gordell. I beg your pardon, sir. Are you the guide? Yeah, I'm August. I've just learned of the proposed climb up the mountain in the morning. I would like very much to accompany the party, if I may. What? You? I don't know, Herr Gordell. A man of your size might find it a little difficult I think to... you will find me surprisingly light on my feet. Mm. You really must want to get up that mountain bad, Gordell. On the contrary, Mr. Mitchell. I delight in acting upon the slightest whim. And the more unpredictable, the better. That's an interesting way of looking at things. I'm quite certain our trip tomorrow will be equally interesting, Mr. Mitchell. Gardell and August head upstairs, and I go out on the terrace for a cigarette. The night is dark and cold. I finish my smoke and turn to go inside. Then I hear a sound behind me. I whirl around. Something's flying through the air at me. I hit the deck. Something plunks into the wall over my head. A mountaineer's ice axe, the kind they use in climbing Alps. I scramble to my feet, but whoever chucked the axe is gone. So now the trail is heating up. I'll be climbing up that mountain tomorrow. I've got a strong hunch one of the members of the party will be doing his or her best to make sure that I come back down the mountain the hard way. And now, back to Dangerous Assignment and Steve Mitchell. Are we all here? Si, si. Let us get started, August. Ready and waiting. Ugh. This is a great time of morning to be starting a hike. It isn't even light yet. Oh, we must reach the top by noon if we're to get back before dark. August, can you get my camera and my knapsack? Yeah. There. Oh, thanks. Now, before we start, let us check the equipment. Now, Mitchell? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have everything. Oh, uh, Herr Grippo... Yeah, you have... Oh, wait. Your ice axe is missing. What? Why, so it is. It must have slipped from my pack. Oh? Well, it's no matter. Here, here's a spare. Thank you. Pretty careless of you losing a thing like an ice axe, Grippo. Or maybe it was more than carelessness. What do you mean by that, Mitchell? Oh, skip it. All right, everybody. Let us start. Better stop here for a rest. I, I could use a bit of a breather. Yeah, suits me too. Where are the others? Grippo and Helen? Around the bend. Ah, here they come. Now, from now on, we will use the ropes. Yeah, been getting many pictures, Helen? No, I've been too busy trying to get my breath. Carlos here. There's an old hand at it, though. Doesn't seem to bother him a bit. <laughs> Funny, an old hand at mountain climbing should lose his ice axe. <laughs> you seem quite concerned over its disappearance, Mitchell. I was quite concerned with one last night, Grippo. I was just wondering if it could have been yours. I have not the slightest idea what you're talking about. Of course not. Uh, wait a moment. There's a wonderful shot of a valley below from right over here. I'll just you a moment. You're quite taken with Helen, Mitchell. Am I? <laughs> so it would appear. I suppose it would also appear that you don't like it much. I, senor? But why should I object? I was under the impression that you followed her here from Munich. <laughs> I assure you it was quite the other way around. What? Mitchell, I have a considerable amount of money. I go where I like, I do what I like. I like to climb mountains, so here I am. But I do not follow women. They follow me. Oh, well, that's nice work if you can get it. It's also very interesting. Steve? Yeah? Come here a moment, would you? Okay. <laughs> And who is it who follows women? Like I say, it's nice work if you can get it. Steve, I, I wonder if you'd steady me a little while I take this picture. Okay. Just hold on to me a moment. That's it. There. That was quick. Uh, maybe too quick. Well, I could take another. Hmm. Or why don't I just save the film? <sighs> well. Glad you came, Steve. I don't know yet. Maybe you'll find the first part's the most difficult. After that, you... You're talking about the mountain, of course. Yes, of course. Steve, I... 
Hey, we're getting sort of close to the edge. So we are. I mean the mountain. You sure? Yeah, Mitchell. Yeah. We are ready to move on. Oh, okay. Come on, Helen. You know, maybe sometime we won't be interrupted at the wrong time. Yeah, we'll probably faint from shock. Be a pretty poor time to faint. <laughs> we will have to use the rope for this next part of the climb and go single file. Okay, I... Hey, wait a minute. What is it? Don't tell me that's the next part of the climb. Oh, yeah. That's the devil's chimney, they call it. Brother, just like a tunnel and it goes straight up. Don't tell me you are afraid, Mitchell. Okay, I won't tell you, Grippo, but I am. You will see. It's not so bad as it looks. It couldn't be, August. How do we climb it? Uh, August has just been explaining it to me. It's called the back and knee technique, Mr. Mitchell. One puts his back against one wall, wedges his arms and knees against the other, and works himself up that way. All right, now snap the rope onto your belts, all of you. I'll lead the way. Herr Grippo is next, then Fräulein Kent, followed by Herr Gordel. Herr Mitchell, you will bring up the rear. August inches his way carefully up the chimney to the ledge above. Then he signals to Grippo, who wriggles up like a snake. Helen makes it without any trouble. Then Gordell starts squeezing himself up. I wait until he's almost to the top. Then I wedge myself in and start. It's slow, tough work. I look up just in time to see Gordell's feet swinging loose and a rock as big as a football coming down at me. I duck my head. The rock grazes my shoulder and hits the bottom. Hey. You're all right, Mr. Mitchell. Yeah, but it's not your fault that I am. Please accept my apology for a most unfortunate accident, sir. <sighs> accident, huh? But of course. My foot slipped and dislodged a boulder. Here. Here, let me give you a hand for the ledge. Yeah. I thought you were the gent who was so light on his feet, Gordell. I am, but there is always the possibility of a slip, Mitchell. There sure is, and... Helen, what's the matter? Oh, when Herr Gordell slipped, the rope jerked for Line Kent against the rocks. Yes, I think I've sprained my ankle, Steve. Oh, great. She can't climb with a sprained ankle. No, no. So, what do we do now? Well, things are not so bad. We are within an hour of the top. Uh, just across the border up there is a little hut with medical supplies. We can get a basket stretcher there in which we can let the Fräulein down the mountain. We? Oui. Those of you who are left behind must stay right here. You cannot get up or down the mountain without my help. But I will need one man to accompany me. I will go with you, August. I'm the best climber. Since I am responsible for Miss Kent's accident, I think it right that I should go. No, senor. I am the logical one. I insist. So Grippo and Gordel both want to go with August to the top, to the border. At this point, it looks like one of them is the runner in the memory chain. The question is, which one? I don't know, and that means I've got to prevent either one of them from reaching the border. August said the party which was left behind can't move from the spot without him. That means there's only one guy who should make that climb with August. I'm your boy, August. Yeah, you're the one I'll take, Herr Mitchell. But why? I am a better climber. And the obligation is mine. I say I will go with you, August. Herr Grippo, Herr Gordel, allow me to remind you that I am the guide. And I will take whom I choose. I choose Herr Mitchell. Come. Hurry back, Steve. Uh, I hope I don't come back in too much of a hurry. Around this bend, Herr uh, Mitchell. Okay. You're probably wondering why I selected you to accompany me. I'm glad you did, August. Well, to tell the truth, I do not trust either of those men. I don't know why. I just do not trust them. You've got company there. Stop here and fasten the rope to your belt. So, now uh, we must work our way across this open face of rock. It'll be a short climb, but a difficult one. There are enough crevices in the rock for handholds. I will go first. Okay. I'll tell you when to follow. Observe where I place my hands and use the same handholds. Right. All right, come ahead. Oh, brother. This is like crawling across a bare wall. Proceed slowly. Keep your body flat against that rock. Do not look down. Hey, it looks like a thousand feet straight down. Two thousand feet. Thanks. Hey, look. Aren't we doing this the hard way? What do you mean? That little ledge about 15 feet below us. Isn't that the same ledge we were on at the top of the chimney? Yeah, but it would take us too long to reach the top by following the ledge. This is a shortcut. Now, stay where you are a minute. 
What are you doing now? See that little perch on top of the rock above us? Huh? I'll work my way up to it and anchor myself. Then I'll help you up there with the rope. So, there's one spike, now another. Brother, remind me never to do this again. All right, Mitchell. I'm up on top of the perch and I'm well anchored. Okay, I'll get going. Yeah, Mitchell, indeed you will. Hey, hey, you pulled me loose. So I did. Now you are just dangling in the air at the end of that rope. What? Oh, great. So you're the last link in the memory chain. Yeah. And with you out of the way, I will carry the message to its final destination on the other side of the border. <laughs> It'll do you no good to try to swing back and forth, Mitchell. You cannot pull me down with you. By leaning back, I can hold you until I choose to cut the rope. That's why I'm swinging. I saw August reaching for his knife, and I've got to keep both his hands occupied on the rope. He leans well back and grins down at me. Then I spot my only chance. At the end of each swing, my body is carried under an overhanging rock out of August's sight. The ledge is about 15 feet below. I get my own knife out, and each time I pass under the rock, I take a whack at the rope. You tired of swinging yet, Mitchell? You ready for that big drop? August has his knife out now, and this is it. I swing under the rock again and cut the last strand. I fall to the edge of the ledge and hang on. It works. August isn't prepared for the sudden release of the strain. Oh, brother. Right over backwards. Major! Major! Huh? Oh, Grippo. Mitch? I followed the ledge around to here just in time to see August trying to cut the rope. Would you beat him too? Yeah. By about one slash of the knife. But why? Why was he trying to kill you? He was the last link in the memory chain. Looks like I owe the three of you an apology, Grippo. Apology? A memory chain? I'm sorry, Mitchell. This I do not understand. Well, it doesn't matter anymore. Because the last link in the memory chain just lost his memory. You might say he got amnesia the hard way. Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell, is written by Bob Reif and Adrian Jondeau, with music by Robert Ambruster, and is produced and directed by Bill Karn. Be with us again next Saturday, when Brian Donlevy, starring in the role of Steve Mitchell, will embark on another Dangerous Assignment. Dangerous Assignment came to you from Hollywood. Three chimes mean good times on NBC.